Today we're going to be taking a look at a little game I've been working on. We're also going to take a look at a composable I wrote for my game, uh, one that's become a little bit leaky over time, and we're going to see how we can recognize that the abstraction has become leaky, and how we can refactor it to consolidate all of the logic in the same place. Before we take a look at that, we need to understand what we're working on and the problem we're trying to solve. Uh, this particular game is a rhythm game, and one of the problems I've encountered is loading large data sets, for example a song over the network, can be pretty slow. Uh, I think users have no problem waiting as long as they know how long they're going to be waiting for, uh, so what I would like to do instead of just showing a loading spinner, is show a little loading bar telling the user exactly how long they have to wait for. And that is the composable I've written, uh, it's going to handle that kind of logic. If I go ahead now and select a song, you can see the loading bar here, and it's telling me exactly how long I have to wait for my application to load. Uh, this is a rhythm game, so as the notes fall down you need to hit them, uh, the rest of it is fairly straightforward and self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and have a look at the code, figure out how I'm handling this, and then see how we can identify a leaky abstraction. So the way you need to load large data sets over an, uh, a network is generally using something called the Streams API. Uh, basically what this lets us do is load the data set incrementally chunk by chunk, processing it bit by bit. As we receive the bits, we can go ahead and update the interface, telling the user exactly how long they need to wait for. Let's take a look at how I managed to implement that one. I'm going to head over to my code base now, and everything starts here inside of the gameplay screen component. Uh, we have this event emitter. It event em emits an event called song loading chunk. This has a callback which has two arguments, s and t, <laughs> probably not the best variable names. s is going to be the current streamed data, and t is going to be the total size. Uh, we then go ahead and collect that data inside of a reactive object called bytes, streamed and total. Finally, based on those, we're going to calculate the percentage, and that is down here. It's just going to be a very simple calculation using math.round, multiplying by 100 to get the percentage. We then go ahead and update the interface based on that. Uh, we can see this code is all over the place, we have a computed value down here, we have an event emitter up here, that's going to reference another variable which is declared right up the top of the file, and the rest of the logic is inside of my composable called useAudioLoader, which takes a single argument which is going to be the file to load. Uh, we can see everything is all over the place here, and this is a fairly good example of a leaky abstraction. What I would like to do is take all of these variables and put them inside of my useAudioLoader, and ultimately all this needs to really do is expose one thing, that is going to be the percentage, how much of the file has loaded. Let's go ahead and take a look at use audio loader now and see how that one works. So this is comprised of two functions. The first is a top level export, use audio loader, which takes a URL. It calls a function called get audio data, taking a URL and an emitter. And then that, when that is resolved, we have the payload and that's going to be the entire audio file. Now let's go ahead now and take a look at get audio data and see how that works. So this is where the bulk of the logic to do with streams is going to be. If you are a web developer, which most of you probably are, you're definitely familiar with this line, window.fetch. You go ahead and fetch some data. Generally people do something like res.json and get their JSON data. Uh, in this particular case, that's not what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using res.body.getreader. This is going to ret return a stream reader, and this is going to allow us to incrementally read chunks over the network. Uh, the next thing we need to do is get the total size, that's going to allow us to show that percentage update, and we can just do that by using the content length header. Finally, now that we have our reader, we can go ahead and create our stream calling the new readable stream constructor. This takes a whole bunch of different options, the only one we need to be concerned with is going to be start, which receives a controller, a readable stream controller. This is what we're going to use to constantly load and queue our chunks. The next thing you need to do is create a variable. Uh, traditionally, this is going to be called pump. Uh, this is a little bit confusing, but the analogy is as follows. If you have a stream, let's say a stream of water, and you're constantly pumping it, every time you pump, you're going to get a little bit more data. Uh, this would be a very confusing analogy to a non-native English speaker, uh, but as we know, developers are not exactly the best at naming things, so this is traditionally what it is called. Either way, now that we have our function, which is called pump, we need to go ahead and call reader.read and this is going to read the next chunk of the stream. If the stream is complete, done is going to be true, so we just go ahead and call controller.close. Huh. Most of the time this is not going to be complete, so we're going to get the next chunk of the value. Uh, using this, we can go ahead then and enqueue it to our internal queue, which is part of this controller. That's done down here. We say controller.enqueue and pass in the next value, and it's basically going to collect all of that inside a single variable for us. 
Uh, finally, we go ahead and call pump and that's going to recursively call itself over and over again until all the data has been collected. And we do need to call that once down the bottom just to start off the initial streaming process. The way I collect uh, the data and then update the interface is using this event emitter. I'm going to em emit an event every single time called song loading chunk. I'm going to have the current size of the current chunk and the total size in bytes. Uh, we have seen this before, song loading chunk. If I head back to my gameplay screen, we can see it right uh, over here. The two callbacks are going to be the current chunk and the total size. We then collect it inside of our bytes object and update the interface. And that's pretty much how this one works. Finally, if we scroll down, there's a bit of extra logic just to pass everything to an audio context, and then we return both of those. What we're now going to do is attempt to move our, our variables from our gameplay screen inside of our composable. The first thing I'm going to do is just move them all to be next to each other, just so it's obvious what's going on. This file is already getting fairly confusing. So we're going to have our bytes here, we're going to have percent, and I'm also going to grab my event emitter and move that one up the top as well. Uh, now that we've done that, we actually need to move uh, the composable up the top as well, just to make sure it's in the correct order. Finally, file is here, I need to move that one as well. So you can see things are getting fairly messy. Uh, this is definitely a good sign we needed to make this refactor and kind of what I was expecting. Uh, now that we have all of these, let's go ahead and move this data inside of our composable. I'm going to delete all three of those and head over to my composable. The next thing we need to do is figure out where we'd like to put these. And we have a few different options. Uh, we could go ahead and make them global up here. Uh, this is definitely not ideal because I'd like to be able to simultaneously load multiple song files. And if this is global, they're all going to kind of conflict with each other. Uh, definitely not a good option. The next option would be putting it inside of use audio loader. And the final option would be putting this data inside of get audio data. I think what I'm going to do is put them inside of use audio loader. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, basically, this is going to be a composable. It's kind of the part of the uh, the application that is going to link our user framework, in this case view or maybe React, with our core logic, which is going to be fetching that data. Uh, I think this get audio data is meant to be just plain old JavaScript. You can see here there's nothing view specific, no reactivity. We're just going to go ahead and fetch some data. And I'd like it to stay this way. I think this is a very simple piece of uh, code. I don't think our interface layer should be leaking in here at all. And that's why I'm going to keep this one pure old JavaScript with no view or reactivity. Instead, what I'm going to do and where I see the seam between my core business logic and my interface is inside of my composable. And that's really what a composable is good for. You can kind of link your business logic and your user interface. So what I am going to do is paste these inside of here. Now that we've done that, we need to do a few imports uh, just to get our everything working. We're going to need reactive from view and I'm going to go ahead and import computed as well. Finally, I need to rename this variable to be called a loading emitter. I changed the name inside of here. And that should be all we need to do for this refactor. Uh, we can see everything is uh, now compiling, which is definitely nice. Uh, percentage is unused. What we need to do is go ahead and expose that by returning it down here. Uh, this is looking pretty good to me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is save it off, head back to my gameplay screen, and then uh, use my newly exposed percentage. So we're going to head back here and inside of emitter or inside of the, the callback from use audio loader, I'm going to go ahead and grab percent. Finally, if we want to see where that one is used, I can just scroll down here. It's inside of my template. I pass it to gameplay loading and here is percent. If I go ahead and take a look at this, it's fairly simple. We have a div and we just update the style based on that prop. Uh, nothing too fancy. If we head back here, we do have one compilation error and it's actually not a compilation error at all. It's just an unused variable. And if we delete that, everything is back to normal. Uh, this file became a lot smaller and more simple and that's definitely a good sign. We managed to push our logic from our user our component inside of our composable. And now this is going to be much easier to be used throughout our application. Uh, there is still a little bit of a code smell here. I'll talk about that in just a moment, but what I am going to do is make sure everything is still working just fine. Let's go ahead and give it a try. And everything is still loading, so I'm fairly confident everything is still working correctly, which is definitely a good sign. I did mention there was still a bit of a code smell here. Let's take a look at that. We have this event emitter here, and this is the code smell to me. I don't think this should be exposed. I think this is kind of an implementation detail of the use audio loader. It was used twice before, once for loading the chunks and now for loading the full data here. Uh, but we can see all it's doing here is emitting an event and then it's going to pass us a variable, which we then go ahead and assign. 
Uh, we then create a function that which returns it, which doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why I did this, but what I really think we should be doing is having a third return value from here, something like audio data. And this would just change uh, depending on whether it has been loaded or not. Uh, we do have a few different options to handle this. I'm not going to make this refactor right now. I'd like to keep, keep this change uh, nice and small, but that's definitely another improvement we could make. Uh, the more logic we can take from our component and push into our composable, the more reusable it's going to be. And I talked about earlier how we could recognize this pattern. Basically, if you have a composable that returns a large number of objects, and then you then take those objects and then compose them again, for example, using a computed property or an event emitter, reassigning the data and then returning it with a function, uh, definitely not ideal. What you probably can recognize there is that you're exposing too much data from your composable and you should take it and push it down inside of your composable. It's going to make your code, uh, your components more readable and simple, and it's also going to make your composable more usable as well. Uh, either way, I'm pretty happy with this refactor. I think it's looking great. And we're going to go ahead and call this the end of the video. Uh, if you did like this kind of content, refactoring a large complex existing code base, please let me know in the comments and I will try to make more of this sort of content. I do find it a lot more interesting than just writing a trivial application, uh, but the audience for this kind of content is obviously going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, but that's all right, I do enjoy doing it, so I'm happy to do it. Either way, thanks for watching, I appreciate the feedback, and I will see you in the next video.